one thing we didn't talk about when we were talking about deprescribing medications is about cholesterol. So when you do a lipid sort of profile test, what do you look at? You look at the total cholesterol and go, oh, that's too high. Uh, so I'm going to panic. Or do you actually look at some uh, triglycerides oh, and the HDL as well and the ratio of those two? So what do you look at? Yeah, so, so as you say, the when people commonly think they think they're getting a cholesterol test, but they're, they're getting what's called a lipid profile. And in that, there's total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, trigly triglycerides and LDL cholesterol. And um, there's been a massive overemphasis on total cholesterol, which I think 99% of the time, I don't find it useful. Um, it really doesn't tell you anything about what's going on. And this concept of high total cholesterol causing heart disease, I don't think it's debated in any circle now. It hasn't caught up into general public, but even um, vast majority of cardiologists now who are very medical intervention orientated won't be saying it's the total cholesterol level that's that's the issue. So total cholesterol, um, one of my big pieces is helping patients understand why that's not important, which is a real tough one because it's mm -hmm. the number everybody wants to know. Um, but I look at the triglycerides and HDL cholesterol um, the most because a high triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol is an indicator of insulin resistance and high insulin levels. And when you're looking at metabolic health, that's what we're interested in. And then I'll look at the LDL cholesterol in context of that and also what the patient's wanting to do. As far as statins go and deprescribing, so I've, I'm very careful not to muddy the water between different things we're trying to achieve. So if it's about improving type 1 diabetes or reversing type 2 diabetes or lowering blood pressure or effectively fixing metabolic health, I say, well, let's do that. Statins, if they work, it may well be not through lowering cholesterol, maybe through some other mechanism. So let's just treat that as a thing on its own. So let's look at what your what's called your cardiovascular risk is once you've made the change. And in UK general practice, we use something called QRIS3. So let's calculate what happens to your risk when you change your diet. Interestingly, most of the modifiable factors in QRIS3 are all related to insulin resistance and improve with a low carbohydrate diet. Um, but equally, if somebody does that and they look and they still want to take a statin, then totally up to them. Equally, other people may not want to. But I think the, the challenge I find in my day to day practice is helping people to see that it's, we shouldn't really be focusing on total cholesterol it's, and, and deciding on that. Um, but um, yeah, that's I, 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 obviously I see 100 results in, in a day sometimes with filing our blood results. And uh, honestly, the total cholesterol serves so there's just no correlation to to a person um with what's going on but isn't apart from a few people sorry but there's a few people it does shoot up lean people who go on a very low carbohydrate diet some of them their total cholesterol really ramps up um i um i think you when that happens we have a kind of a a personalized discussion but invariably their hdl cholesterol has gone up the triglycerides have gone down they're feeling better we can run the calculator curious calculator and let's keep it objective and and again decide on that um but that's a really interesting cohort of people which um i think there's more research to come on what that means but yeah. i've got my personal opinions but um, um i was one of them so my ldl went up slightly um but uh, triglycerides and hdl are fine normal in, in fact healthy uh, in a healthy range um A1C is in a healthy uh, 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 place. Um, I'm fit. I'm weightlifting. Reverse my uh, uh, diabetic frozen shoulders through exercise alone and without any medications, injections. Um, I do weightlifting. So I'm just overall, I feel healthy, energetic. Blood sugars are stable most of the time. And if I do have fluctuations, they're so minimal that there's nothing to worry about. They're just small, law of small numbers, as Dr. Bernstein says in his Diabetes Solution book. So uh, the, the fluctuations are tiny and that's the, the, nothing to worry about. So um, yeah, LDL went up slightly, though not much. Um, but again, I'm not worried about it. But I was going to ask about the total cholesterol is, is basically the summation of all your three, the triglycerides, HDL, 
And LDL? Uh, it's it's the it, the total cholesterol um, is is the all the cholesterol in the lipoprotein, so HDL, uh, LDL, and the LDL. Um, it's, it's all of that together. So um, so technically, it could go up if your HDL has gone up too. <laughs> yeah. So the and, and the ratio that's often used. So I, I'm I, I like the triglyceride to HDL cholesterol ratio, but the ratio that's often used in healthcare is total cholesterol to HDL cholesterol mm. ratio. Mm -hmm. Um, so if your total cholesterol goes up, but your HDL also goes up, the ratio may go down if, you, if, if the HDL goes up. Again, this fits with numbers and measurements. So just another point and linking to your personal measures that you just and everything else getting better. So again, going back to the quality improvement methodology, you have your main measure that you're focusing on. So in diabetes, it might be HbA1c. Mm -hmm. And then you have what's called balancing measures. And balancing measures are other things that might go right or wrong. Now, you can, you can improve your, your primary measure, for example, your HbA1c, but actually you can completely destroy the body. And the way you can do that is just by injecting loads of insulin, sure. eating loads of carbohydrate, yeah. injecting loads and loads of insulin. You might keep your HbA1c under control, but you'll gain weight, your blood pressure will go up, you'll feel terrible, you'll get, you'll get uh, frozen shoulder problems. Um, you know, in, get increased insulin resistance. So when you look at that, your triglycerides will go up, your HDL cholesterol will go down. So you look at that and you think actually every other mark is going wrong. This is not the right intervention. This is this is this is this is this is breaking the system. Um, versus if you find an intervention where everything with the HbA1c improves and everything else gets better, then you know well this is the right intervention for this person. Now, the, the whole thing around cholesterol and LDL is, is a really uh, muddy thing that would be a much bigger discussion. But um, I feel that if you're measuring 20 things like Verta have done in some of their studies for cardiometabolic health, you measure 20 things and everything else is better and the LDL has gone up a bit. I would hazard to say that's probably not the LDL getting unhealthy or worse. Mm -hmm. It's... I would, have, I would say if, if, if this car is now running super smoothly with a pristine engine and an enjoyable journey and it never breaks down, any other measure that's sitting on its own there is an issue. Whereas if this car is going 30 miles an hour, but the wheels are falling off, the engine's blowing up, the clutch is burning out, then, then maybe that the intervention of pressing the accelerator and the brake at the same time to go 30 maybe isn't, <laughs> isn't the best idea.